Oh, look at that rendering. Oh, we're gonna be here all day. We should probably quit this before we die. Now, here's the fun part. How do we get this? to work with this. Oh man, all I wanted to do was hook up the CD300. Doesn't let me shut down. It won't let me shut down. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really, that's just great. You know what, I'm doing pretty great today too because my Apple CD 300 is here. And you know, I wanted to use it with that 2CI in that other episode, but I couldn't. However, I now have the correct CN50 SCSI cable so I can hopefully daisy chain it to that other SCSI drive and use it with the Mac 2CI in a future video. However, today I would like to test this with the cable it came with. This isn't exactly the cable that came with it, but it's the same type of SCSI interface, the smaller one that is more suitable for a laptop. So I have a 5300 CS here, and it's kind of wonky. It turns on right away when I plug it in. You don't even have to press the power button. We're in the future. Let's see, where's the power port? Oh gosh. There, plug it in, and it just turns on. No effort required. So, I wanna let that boot up because it takes a little bit. This is a caddy loading CD-ROM drive and I have our test CD of Premiere 1.0 from that original Premiere episode quite a way back. And I would like to see if I can get CDs working on here with the external drive. So let's get this thing some power. Plug it in, plug it in. I have never used this before. This will be the first time. It could explode. SCSI with the satisfying click we're about to experience. You know, I just, oh shit. <laughs> Hang on. I made a boo-boo. I'm guessing I should not hot plug this thing. So I'm gonna have to wait for this computer to boot up and then I'm gonna have to just shut it right back down. Where's my screen? Um, but the hard drive is going at it. I'm just gonna, oh shit, can't even shut it down from there. All right, we're just kind of stuck. What the hell, man? What's going on with this power book? It's, it's like not showing anything. Yeah, it's not even letting me adjust display settings. Doesn't let me shut down. It won't let me shut down. I guess I gotta pull the power. Hang on. Well, I'd rather pull the power while the hard drive isn't doing anything. Nothing personal. Plug in the SCSI. Wow, this is a tight cable. Shit. Okay, so that itty bitty SCSI cable was just a little too tight. So, I did a switcheroo, and the slack is now better. So, power on. We got a light. Can we eject from here? Oh, hey, look at that. Whoa, hang on. What the hell? Macintosh Performa CD, system software and other programs for the 5260 CD. Did they accident, did the, dude, did the guy I bought this from like accidentally leave a CD in there or did he include it just because? That's awesome. We have um, system software 753 on here. Um, it's specifically for the 5260 CD, the Performa, but I'm guessing we can maybe make this work with other computers, but all right, well, I'll add that to my collection of system software. <laughs> but yeah, this is a caddy loading disk drive. So we kind of pinch the front here and just lift it up. Take the CD out. Take the CD out. Son of a, it's hard to do this vertically. There we go. So yeah, there's our, there's our caddy. I now have two of these. Well, that's awesome. So yeah, I guess we'll just put the included CD in there, close up the caddy, and then kind of like a VHS tape, this side faces up, you put it inside and look at that. I, I call me new school, but I've never used a caddy loading CD-ROM drive before. That's actually kind of cool. Okay, now let's boot up the 5300 CS, which was refusing to boot up. Hello, I hope you work. Okay, hope this thing works. It was seriously working like a couple weeks ago. Oh man, all I wanted to do was hook up the CD-300, but the curse just couldn't let me have my fun. We're now having a case of green light coma. Uh, or light coma, or whatever they call it. But yeah, it is actually an issue. I have had it with this computer before, and I remember looking it up. Yeah, the, the power light just stays on, but the computer 
doesn't actually turn on. So I believe the way to fix this is to reset the PMU, the power management unit, I think it's called. So all I was trying to do was reset the pram to maybe get the display thing to change and um, we got green light coma. So let's see here. There you go. On this particular model, it's just a switch on the back. I believe that is the PMU reset. Okay, it's booting back up. Hopefully now it works. Take 5,003. Yeah, I think our display is dying here. I don't know if you can see all that flickering. It, it says, welcome to Macintosh. It, it's trying to do something. You know, a couple weeks ago, my, well, this particular display did kind of freak out a bit. It went black and it had like some orange stripes on it, but I rebooted the computer and it was fine. But I guess now that it sat for a couple weeks, it's just uh, malfunctioning. Oh yeah. Oh, hang on. We kind of have it. There we go. We just had to jiggle it a little bit. And now it looks like it's frozen. I don't hear the hard drive doing anything. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, reboot. Okay, hopefully it now works this time. Oh yeah, this is kind of coming back to me. Recently I have noticed these uh, like lines showing up as well. So I seriously think there's some kind of connection problem between the display and the board. I pushed the display downward and then it started working better. But yeah, you can see, ooh, the display is on its last legs. Oh no, it's not moving again, why? Is it the CD? Is like the, SCSI device freaking out? Because I don't want to plug it in while this thing is booted up. I don't think you should hot plug these things. In fact, some of you told me I shouldn't even be hot plugging Apple desktop bus devices, which, yeah, that was negligent. I didn't even know that, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, if I shouldn't even be hot plugging ADB devices, I really shouldn't be hot plugging SCSI devices. Oh, now it's continuing, okay. All we had to do was talk about it and then it just started working again. Okay, well, whatever Macintosh. You do you, you do you. Now here's the fun part. How do we get this to work with this? I know CD support was introduced with system seven and we're on seven five. So the support should be there. Let's try ejecting and reinserting and see if it does something. I hear it doing something. It's green. Okay, so the question is, am I using this wrong or does it not work? I did buy it off eBay, so there's always the risk that something won't work, but it has a green light. It changes from amber to green. So it looks like it knows what it's doing, but I can't seem to get it to connect to the computer. And just to verify, I do have the Apple CD-ROM extension turned on. So yeah, at this point, I don't know what's going on. So I am hungry. I'm going to take care of my empty belly. But then I will return, hopefully with some answers from the Google machine and or the eBay seller, and we'll go from there. Sit tight. Okay, so I decided to bust out the 2CI again and hook up the Apple CD300 with that other SCSI cable I was talking about earlier, the CN50. I don't have a monitor hooked up, but the light changed color multiple times, so I think it actually loaded, but I gotta hook up a monitor to see first. I also tried this on a different power book, but uh, let's try, let's try this on the 2CI. Let me just make sure I'm not seeing things. Oh, hey, it won't let me eject now, so I think it's actually mounted and we have to do it from the desktop. Okay, let's hook up a mouse, keyboard, and a monitor. I busted out the trusty SyncMaster 2243BWX just rolls off the tongue. And uh, let's uh, see if this worked. Hey, hey, Performa CD. Oh man, let's uh, hook up a mouse. Mouse, 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 does anybody have a mouse? Uh, just realized I'm not supposed to hot plug ADB devices, but how can I plug something in to shut down the computer so I can not hot plug, th I don't know, it's a big mess. Ah, I'm just gonna do it. Now I could use this really cool black Apple desktop bus mouse too. Uh, but this is part of a special Mac computer. I don't want to use it now. We'll have to get back to that later. Stick around. For now, I'm just gonna use this, use this, you know, boring beige, ugh, Apple desktop bus mouse too. Ugh. This guy, you'll see him later. Now I know you're not really supposed to hot plug Apple desktop bus devices. You, you techies have made that very clear. I appreciate the help, but 
I have no way to interface with the computer to safely shut it down anyway. I know I shouldn't do that, but to be honest, I've been negligently doing that for years, and I, I might have broke something, but I can't remember. <laughs> okay, uh, we need a... Actually, this isn't working too bad. Ah, uh, crap, we need a good mouse pad. Anyway, let's bust this open. Yeah, shit! Hang on, I gotta move the trackball with my finger. This thing is not tractioning very well on my desk. About the CD. The Macintosh Performer CD contains copies of all the system software, and this is awesome. So the CD drive works. I don't know why it wasn't working with the PowerBook, but it works with the 2CI. Okay. So I wonder... Hmm... If this CD drive is working, maybe we can finally complete the Premiere experiment and use Adobe Premiere 1.0 on native 1989 68K Macintosh hardware. That would be fun. All right. Oh, and I got a mouse pad. And I like a Pro, Final Cut Pro 10. Look at that. Coincidentally, we will not be using Final Cut Pro 10. We will be using Adobe Premiere 1, which came way before. However, they were both written by the same chief architect, Randy Ubelos. How fun. Okay, let's quit. And there we go. It's, it's just like a little delivery. Like, here you go, sir. Enjoy. I'm just glad this thing isn't having hardware issues. I guess it just wasn't compatible with either the SCSI cables. I tried two different SCSI cables, though. None of them worked. Maybe that PowerBook just didn't have enough power. <laughs> so, Premiere 1. Inside the caddy. Close her up. Pop her in. Let's see what happens. If this does work, my idea of using this 2CI as our Petri dish for Adobe Premiere and other programs is another step closer to reality. 6100, yes, that's what I named this CD back when I was trying to get it to work with my Power Macintosh 6100, but that thing won't detect any hard drives or anything. I think the pram battery might be dead. At least that's what some of you guys suggested. As you can see, .fs events D for demon, I'm guessing. So that just shows you this was burned with <laughs> some kind of Unixy thing. This was actually burned on Mac OS X Leopard. And here's our files. Huh, I, I just realized, wait, what the f I mean, I have the picture files, but do I have the, do I have the program? I don't know. Let's make sure, let's see if one of these pictures works. Yes, simple text opens up the picture files. I, I don't know, the old Mac OS just had a text editor open up your pictures. I don't know why. That's just how it was. <laughs> hey, there it is. There's my photo. I mean, it's gonna dither a little bit because of the limited color palette, but yeah, that's my photo of Cloudgate in Chicago. Oh, look at that rendering. Oh, we're gonna be here all day. We should probably quit this before we die. <laughs> it's also coming off of a CD at like probably 2x speed over SCSI <laughs> or two times speed. Anyway, yeah, so there's pictures. I feel like we're missing something though. Did I seriously burn the CD without burning the freaking? I have a feeling that I forgot to burn the actual Adobe Premiere software to the CD, but we at least know one, the CDs that I burn with Leopard work, the Mac OS standard format is compatible. And two, we know that the Apple CD 300 external SCSI drive works. So that's the battle. Like we won that. As long as I know those things work, that's fine. I can burn more CDs. I bought a bunch of them, like a hundred of them with a little carrying handle built into the case. It's pretty freaking awesome. Movie player, but yeah. Um, I'll put Premiere on here and see if it works. That'll be in a future tech video log. Right now, I just wanted to make sure I can get CDs working on this 2CI. And yeah, even with Daisy chaining the CD drive on this Club Max SCSI thing, like even with doing that, it just worked first try. I'm actually pretty impressed. Okay, let's see if we can open up something here. Um, mm. Let's go to the CD. Let's see, Untitled Movie, let's see if that works. Oh, hey, there's my face. I saw my face show up in the preview. Hoo-hoo, I've never seen my face in such an old operating system before, but I think we're about to. Oh my gosh, this, this is quality. This is quality right here. Like you've never seen before. That's really bad, wow. Yeah, um, get info. I'm guessing this is just compressed with road pizza. It probably won't tell me, but uh, you know, Apple video. 
the old original format for <laughs> QuickTime. Wow, look, look at this. L super low resolution. Well, let's uh, try playing it. There you go, guys. Wow, okay, so the movies work. That gives me some hope that this computer has enough performance to run Adobe Premiere. This is exciting. Okay, I'm calling this a win. I cannot wait to try out more programs, including Adobe Premiere, on this Macintosh 2CI, thanks to the help of this external CD-ROM drive. So subscribe, stick around. I have so much more fun stuff I wanna show you. Oh, yes, and another rare Mac as well. A lot of cool stuff coming up. So, thanks for sticking with me. More cool stuff to come, catch the crazy, and pass it on.